Today I'm going to share a tool with you that is going to take all the guesswork out of sharpening your axe or large hatchet, the FSS hand tool sharpening gauge. For your shovels as well. So a few weeks back I received an email from my subscriber Mike and his wife Mary and they said we have a Filson jacket we'd like to send you, it's lightly used, it's in good condition, we think it'll fit you, um, can we send that out? And when, they, when the package arrived, and this is half of it, this is the liner, uh, inside was this uh, FSS gauge. And the thing I really appre appreciate, Mike and Mary, is that you put the laminated the instructions on there because I wouldn't have really understood exactly how how to use this because there's so many different functions to it. It's kind of if you didn't have that, you wouldn't really know. Uh, wonderful tool. Thank you very much for sending it. I've got my um, two fire tools that I primarily use. Uh, I've got my um, FSS Pulaski here and my FSS fire shovel. You guys have seen this in the past. I did a handle. Made, I make my own handles because I'm tall and the handles that come on them I think are too short. So I put long handles on them and keep a really close eye on them because they tend to want, people want to take them because they like those long handles. But let's, uh, let's bring you up close here and I'll show you how this wonderful tool works. All right, so let's break it down here. I'm still kind of trying to learn how to use it myself here. So we've got two sides. You can see on this side right here, this is uh, the Pulaski side. Right here you see this is an FSS Pulaski. This is the tool that it's designed to work with. And here we can see sharpening limits. So what it's telling us is actually, you know, because the Forest Service, they actually routinely wear these things out. You or I, you know, working around our home or homestead, the tool like that's going to last us forever if we take care of it. But the Forest Service, man, they go through them. Uh, so right here you can see, so this gauge is used. So let's see, we've got to see, is the tool still serviceable or should it be discarded? So to check the blade, you can see the blade mark right there and line it up with the, with the back right there and we can see that we still have plenty of blade there. That's sticking out there probably almost an inch or so. So there's a lot of blade left on that. So we can also check the hoe. So if we flip this over here, let's try this, I'm working in tight, tight con confines here. Let's see if we, this will help a little bit. So if we measure the back of the hoe right here, right there, to the back we can see that we have plenty of hoe left. See right there? So when you reach that limit, the tool is, according to the Forest Service, has had it. It's time to be replaced. Now it doesn't stop there, so also things that are important are angles and bevels of grinds. Now on the back side, now this is the tool I have, this was kind of just, uh, I would just put this away after last year's fire season and it's in the condition it was when I left the fire ground. So you can see it's pretty beat up. The edge has got some nicks in it. It's going to need some work. I try to keep up on it in the field, but well, you know, it just doesn't always happen. So according to this, if we put, we wanted to determine this bevel. Now a Pulaski should always be ground on the bottom side on the bottom side there, not the, not the top. If you see them done that way, they need to be re reprofiled. So this tells us right here, by lining that little notch up, bring you in frame right there, we'll see. Have I, <laughs> uh, you might call me out here, did I, did I grind it right there? And you can see that indeed I have it pretty close, pretty close right there. So just by pivoting that right there off that, that mark gives you that exact angle. So in the field, you can check this. You can check that all the way across there like that and see, did I get it right? Now also you see these little cutouts, these nicks here are for the blade. And you know, I've made these gauges before, but this one is far superior uh, to the one that I made. Let me reposition this a little bit here so you can see better what I'm talking about here. Okay, so we've got two, two kind of cutouts there for an ax. And what it says right here is that this should be the top of the top of the blade, top of the blade right there, and this is the midsection of the blade. So it's a lot more comprehensive than the one that I made. So I can check the top of the blade should be this angle right there, which you, you can see that it is. But what the Forest Service is saying is no, that should change. That should those cheeks should come back in come back in here as you get to the midsection of the blade and as you can see right there as it does. So that's good to know. 
I, w- I kind of freehand my things, you know, and I, and I, you never really do know, but it's glad to see here that kind of the, what I've got going on there is, is pretty much what the Forest Service says you should have. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? So you can really dial it in. You don't have any guesswork. You can get right there on the tip, and then you can come right there and find out in the midsection exactly where you are. What's really neat about this is they, they've drilled that hole in there, right? Oops, let me get a focus. Drill that hole, those holes in there, so it doesn't come in contact with your blade. So if you have a really nice edge on there, you're not going to compromise it. Not that you would, because this is aluminum and it's much softer material than the than what the axe should be made of. There you see the FSS stamp on there. That's really cool, isn't it? So also, it's going to cover. There's your bevel. That's what I was talking about right there. You can see the Pulaski hoe bevel putting on the angle like we did to determine this right here. Isn't that neat? And this also is true for axes, Pulaski shovels, combi tools, and McLeods. So this will cover all of your fire tool sharpening needs. And I, so right here we can see shovel, combi tool, McLeod angles. Now I like to use combi tools. I don't like uh, McLeods, but I do like shovels. So, so this is giving you your bevel angles for your shovels as well. So you can see here, here's my FSS shovel. These are the best shovels in the world. And I can't really see exactly how that's going to work, to be honest with you, because that's such a small bevel. But it does give you something right here. So it's got a marking gauge from what, zero to two and a half inches. Right there. Do you see that? Zero to two and a half inches. And it says here, sharpen shovel blade to within two and a half, two inches, plus or minus, of the turn step. So what that's telling us right here is that the Forest Service says that we should sharpen our tools. This is the turn step right there. That's where you step on the tool. We should stop sharpening it right there. And you can see I've got mine sharpened all the way back. I don't really know why that is, but that's what it says. Maybe because it's just a waste of time because you don't use that much of the tool up there. But uh, just a very handy gauge for that. And then at, just to wrap up here, so we have the shovel combi tool McLeod. We have a 50 degree and a 40 degree angle those must be for the tine bevels on the McLeods. I'm not sure what that is. I, I, that I can't say for sure, but isn't that a great tool? I wanted to share that with you. I thought that that was just super generous. Um, appreciate that very much, Mike and Mary, and I love the Filson jacket. But uh, uh, what if you guys, any of you who are, who are subscribers that can get on the internet, who are you are super sleuths and find out are these still available through the FSS, through the General Service Administration, the GSA? And if so, we could find a link, because I bet they don't charge very much. There's a lanyard hole, so you don't lose it. Is this something that I would carry in the field as a wildland firefighter? I don't know that, that one, maybe one of them, let's say maybe, maybe it would be like a squad tool. One person could have it if you had something that was really out of whack or got out on the fire line and didn't, wasn't put into proper condition. To have this for, for some people that are not really accustomed to filing tools, I think it's great. But I love it just to keep me in check, just to make sure that I don't start uh, getting my tools out of whack, especially the axes. But it doesn't weigh very much. You could certainly pack it around. And obviously these are available, these instructions to download somewhere online. I don't know where, but let's find those and I'll, I'll post that information and make that available to everyone. But uh, again, thanks to Mike and Mary for this uh Really, really interesting tool. Um, I've very much enjoyed it. So, speaking of tools, you can see behind me here, this is my brand new Mystery Ranch Wildland Pack that I very, 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 very much uh, love. I, I have been using my Coaxure for years. I had some real concerns, a couple things on there that I did not like that really bothered me. And I've been waiting for them to come out with this p p pack particularly. It's a Inner, or it's a initial attack uh, pack designed for engine crews, and it is the business. It is the business. So uh, let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that. Um, I'll break that down for you. I've done a lot of wildland stuff. I don't know if there's going to be an interest, but if you do, leave it in the comments, and I'll and I'll go into it because it is an extraordinary pack, all handmade in the United States, and it has some design elements to it I've never seen before that I would say are Border lighting on brilliant. So that's my review of the hand FSS hand tool 
sharpen and gauge. Today feels like spring for the first time. It is so beautiful outside. The dogs are out sunning themselves. Everything's coming up. The flowers are blooming. It is just one of the finest times of year. Speaking of fine, I've got one of my favorite videos to share with you. So the very shovel that I just featured in the video, uh, this is probably one of my most popular videos. The one that's it hasn't got the biggest numbers, but it is the one that I received the most comments on, and it was restoring this FSS fire shovel, custom making a handle, and uh, building a rivet for it, and, and all of that. And and it's more than that. It's was uh, What I was trying to get across in the video was just the importance of of preserving things of high quality and, and, and getting away from the mindset of everything being throwaway and disposable. And... Um, yeah, that, that's kind of what it's going for. So if you'd like to watch that, click on that. Uh, if you are a mobile subscriber and you still don't know about the card system, click on the top right. You'll see a little icon there. That will take you to additional content and information that i like to share with you at the end of videos. So what's going on today? Mrs. W is away. She has a ladies' night that she goes to. She has, I think, for like, uh, I don't know, 16 years, the same women. They meet once a month. Uh, and they at uh, each other's homes and they've been doing this the same group for years and years and so she spends a night with a friend in Portland and I'm on my own but she'll be back today and I miss her terribly but we have a great project the kitchen's coming along well we are putting in the big window and we'll start installing the cabinets and I'm I'm really looking forward to share that with you and she is very excited so, and I'm excited to have her back. So what else is going on? So one thing I was going to bring up, of course, you know that we'll be in North Carolina at the Mother Earth News Fair. A lot of questions on those. Are we coming to Pennsylvania? Are we coming to Oregon? Yes, we'll be going to all of them. If you go to MotherEarthNews.com, excuse me, MotherEarthNewsFair.com, you'll see a list of all the events. And we will be there speaking and signing books at all of them. So in addition to that, we will be going to England this year. And Mrs. W brought up the idea. She says, why don't you maybe reach out in a video to see if, because we have a lot of uh, of you uh, subscribers are from uh, England and, and many in London. Uh, we'll be visiting London. Uh, maybe there's a way we can put together a, a meet and greet. Um, I don't know the area. I've never been to England. Um, if somebody could step up and help to arrange that, a venue or you know of a good pub or something that would accommodate a lot of people, uh, I would, I would be, I appreciate that. We would love to do that and to be able to meet some of you guys that are from, from England, in the UK. You know that I am a, um, a big fan of England. Love, love many things from England, especially fish and chips. You know, you can't get a proper, you get, there's not a prop. It's, it's hard to find a proper chippy uh, in the, in the United States. And I, whenever I meet someone uh, from the UK that has moved in this area, that's the first thing I ask him is, have you found a good place to get fish and chips? And most of them say, yeah, um, back home. So if you know of a good chippy in the States, let me know. All right, that's enough. We'll see you guys on the next video. Mm -hmm.